How's it going guys? Danomite here coming to you as always from the Digital Warfare 24-7 forums and today I am going to be bringing you guys a gameplay of Domination on Hardhat. Now I'm not going to be discussing the gameplay too much, I'm actually going to be going over the class that I have planned out for me to use in Black Ops 2. But before I jump into that, I'd just like to apologize. I realize my voice sounds very congested. I'm getting over an absolutely horrible cold. I was actually hoping I would be able to get over it completely before I put out another commentary, but it's been a week since my last commentary. I'm leaving you guys hanging for content, so here we go, guys. Just try not to judge the quality of my voice too harshly. Now, when I'm thinking about what kind of class I want to use, uh, the approach that I usually take is what are the core assets? You know, what are the create a class elements that I absolutely can't live without? And so when I'm considering that, the first thing that I'm going to consider is my primary weapon. That's what I'm going to be getting most of my kills with. Um, it's going to be very important to have that exactly the way I want it. So for me, what I want to use, and you can see sort of how I'm using a, 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 uh, a very versatile assault rifle in this game, is an assault rifle that can handle itself at all ranges. So I don't want a pea shooter like the M4 from Modern Warfare 3 that isn't going to be able to do enough damage at long range. And we know from uh, the videos that have been released of Create a Class that the SCAR H is going to be in Black Ops 2 and that it is going to have enhanced damage and range. And that's going to be perfect for a player like me who likes to be able to pick people off at long range but also have that close range potency for when things get up close and personal. Now the SCAR H is also going to have um, very clear iron sights so you don't need to use an optic. So the SCAR H in Black Ops 2 is actually going to have a 30 round magazine as opposed to the tiny 20 round magazine that was featured in the uh, Modern Warfare 2 version. So that is what I'm going to be using for my primary, I'm pretty sure. Now, you see in this game I do a lot of aiming around corners with Stalker. That's something that I definitely want to incorporate into my gameplay in um, Black Ops 2. So what I'm going to be using as one of my attachments, along with the suppressor, which of course is an absolute necessity for someone who plays, um, who plays from the shadows picking people off, is the adjustable stalk. And that is going to have a very similar effect as Stalker does in Modern Warfare 3. It gives you enhanced, um, enhanced maneuverability, uh, faster movement speed while you're in uh, aim down sights mode. So that is going to be um, one of my attachments. The other one, like I said, is going to be the suppressor so I can stay off the minimap. Um, and now moving on, the most important perk for me is going to be Ghost, without a question. Now I say that because in this game, uh, in Black Ops 2 that is, the UAV has been confirmed as the first score streak that you unlock, and also the points that you get, if, if your teammates are getting kills while you have a UAV up, you'll actually get points that count towards your score streak from that UAV. So for that reason, I see UAV spam as being um, an even bigger uh, feature of Black Ops 2, and to counter that, I'm definitely going to want to have Ghost in that perk 1 uh, slot. Now, along with Ghost in that slot, I'm also really going to want to want, I'm really going to want to want to want, I'm going to want Flak Jacket, because uh, Black Ops 2 is going to be awarding objective players significantly more than, um, than say, games like Modern Warfare 3, or especially Black Ops 1 ever did. So to be able to rack up those fast score streaks, you're really going to want to be able to stay in the area of the flags when you play Domination. And to do that, you're going to want protection from uh, things like grenades, from C4, and that sort of thing. Now, another reason why uh, Flak Jacket is going to be absolutely crucial is because the Hunter Killer and the RCXD are two low-level explosive score streaks that are going to be very easy for people to spam. Now this is because uh, none of the score streaks have the same score requirements in Black Ops 2. So you can literally run any combination that you want. So you could run, for instance, um, you could have someone running UAV, Hunter Killer, RCXD, just spamming out those low-level kill streaks. And in anticipation of that, I think Ghost and Flak Jacket are both going to, going to be really good at taking away that threat from players who are trying to spam those low-level score streaks. Now, in order to use both of these together, I'm going to have to use uh, Perk 1 Greed, so that is going to cost an additional point there. Now, for the next core asset that I want to use, I really need to have C4. Now, I became a lover of C4 in Modern Warfare 3. It is fantastic for clearing out rooms, for defending and taking objectives, um, and best of all, uh, sc screenshots from the Creative Class videos that have been released show that you can again double tap X to detonate the C4. Now that is a big reason why I didn't use C4 in Black Ops 1, but why 
uh, I became so comfortable using it in uh, Modern Warfare 3. So we're going to need that C4 in the lethal slot. And now uh, the next most important thing that I want is going to be Scavenger. Now Scavenger is going to be able to allow me to keep up a constant hail of C4 down on my enemies. And it is also going to allow me to basically never run out of ammo in my primary weapon. And that's important because if I'm someone who's going to rely on the adjustable stock on that added ADS maneuverability, I don't want to be picking up other people's weapons who don't have an adjustable stock and then getting all screwed up. So Scavenger is going to be really useful in that regard. Now for my Tier 3 perk, I think I'm going to go with Awareness. This is subject to change right now. It depends on how good it is and if it actually silences your own footsteps as well. But um, Awareness is going to give me um, an enhanced ability to fight at close range, which is important when you have a weapon like the Scar-H that doesn't shoot all that fast, so you're going to need that extra bit of awareness. And I'm hoping it will also allow me to throw C4 around corners to anticipate enemy movement better and be able to position myself both with, uh, both with the adjustable sock allowing me to maneuver in position to get shots off with my Scar-H, and then also with being able to throw that C4 on top of them. Now, at this point, with everything I've listed, I believe I'm up to nine points, so I'm going to have uh, one last point to work with there. Now, I'm probably going to spend that on a tactical grenade. I'm not really sure which one's going to be best yet, but I'm thinking that the uh, concussion is a good option, since it's, uh, you were able to throw it faster in Black Ops 1, and I'm hoping that it will be the same in Black Ops 2. Although the shock charge is intriguing, because you can stick it in things, and it also looks like it has a fast throw time. So uh, that asset is also definitely on the table. Now, I was for the longest time thinking that I would make a lot of use of the sensor grenade, which is basically something that's very similar to Recon from Modern Warfare 3, where you throw it out and um, a little scan goes out and it marks all the people in a direct line of sight, all the enemies, um, so that you can see them. But uh, my understanding from the people who have been playing at Gamescom has been that, um, that the sensor grenade does not show enemy direction, it only shows their location in real time. And I'm still not sure if it, uh, if it shows enemies on your teammates' mini-maps as well, like Recon does in Modern Warfare 3. So once I figure that out, um, that's probably going to contribute to my decision as to what to use in my lethal slot. Now, or in tactical slot, rather. Now, using a tactical is also really nice, uh, along with scavenger, because I'm going to be able to, again, replenish that. So it's going to be a continuous option. Uh, for me to defend myself, say, if I'm out of ammunition and I need a chance to reload, throw out a shock charge or a concussion grenade to buy me some time, um, I think those are going to be really good options for me there. <clears throat> now, for my score streaks, I'm going to want a springboard kill streak, one that I can sort of push off of to get my higher level kill streaks. And for that, I'm thinking about either the hunter, or not the hunter, the, uh, let's see, the hellstorm missile or the, uh, or the lightning strike. Now these are two sort of mid-level kill streaks. The Hellstorm missile costs 525 score, and the Lightning Strike costs 550. Now the Hellstorm missile is basically like the Predator missile, except you can choose to basically split it into many smaller missiles. So if you have a scattered field of enemies, you can uh, you can split them up, and you can just rain down on all of them and pick up some huge multis. Now the only reason why I think the Lightning Strike might be good is because it's just like the Mortar Team from Black Ops One except that after you designate the strike locations, um, the strikes actually come in very quickly. Now the mortar team in Black Ops 1, uh, it, there was really a long lag time, so the chances of your intended target actually still being in the area by the time the mortars dropped was very low. But again, the lightning strike only costs 25 more points, so it might be a very good uh, viable uh, score streak as far as a springboard score streak goes. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to drink some water real quick because my throat is still sore. Oh, that's better. Alrighty. Now for my second kill streak, I'm going to be using the Orbital VSAT. Now this is basically just like the Blackbird from Black Ops 1. It costs uh, 900 score to use, and it's going to show all of the enemy locations on the minimap, which is going to be absolutely huge. And hopefully I'm going to be able to chain that very quickly into the Lodestar. Now the Lodestar is very similar to the Reaper, which you see me using in this game except that the Reaper, or the uh, Lodestar rather, has unlimited missiles, um, although the missiles are more difficult con to control, they have a faster speed and a larger blast radius to compensate for that, so I'm definitely thinking I'll be able to rain downhill with that. 
Well, my uh, my throat is just about giving out here, guys, and so is the amount of time left in this gameplay. So I'm going to sign off for now, and uh, I will be sure to keep you guys fed with a steady stream of content leading up to Black Ops 2. Thanks so much, you guys. Rate, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this and would like to see more, and I'll catch you guys next time.